Listen in and join the fun. Learning as we go, new words and stories. Adventures begun. Let's open up the pages. Don't have far to look. It's all in a book. Rupees. Reading room. Rupees. Well, hello, little readers. Welcome to Ruthie's Reading Room. I'm Ruthie, and this is my buddy, Ja. He's my favorite stuffy, and he's joining us for story time today. Is everybody excited to read along? Yes? All right. So I'm going to invite you to go and get your stuffy or blankie or a reading buddy. That can be your Nana and Papa. And bring them along. Run and come back now. <laughs> Hey, welcome everybody. Come on, sit down, get comfy. We're gonna read a story next. Okay, let's ask the question, which book is coming off the shelf next? Let's see. Can everybody see that? The book is called Best in Me. This book was written by Natalie McDonald Perkins and illustrated by Mary Ebay. Isn't the front cover super cool? There's a lot of different kids on the front and they look like they have their hands up. They look happy and excited. I'm looking forward to see what is inside the pages of this book. How about all of you? Yes, you're excited too. Okay, let's not put it off any longer. Let me make sure you're ready. Ja, get, take your seat over here. Okay, let's put our listening ears on and put our hands in our lap. Excellent. Shh, I'm gonna check to make sure we're ready to go. All right, my friends. Looking out over everybody. Hi, Amanda. Yes, I see you. Good job. Hi, Kai. Always good to see you too. Oh, good job sitting quietly. All right, shh. We're ready to start. Okay, best in me. Let's start with a dedication. To every person reading this book, as you truly look within yourself, discover and or rediscover the best in you because true happiness comes from loving what makes you unique. You know I love that. We always talk about how important it is to be you, uniquely and perfectly you. This is a great start. <laughs> Mrs. Patterson, the school counselor, has created a group for students who are bullied at school. The students have learned how to use I messages and assertive language. Ooh, what does assertive mean? Yeah, being confident, that's right. Today, Mrs. Patterson is excited to see her students in their last counseling session being more confident and happier than ever. She has an interesting task for them. Good morning, everyone. Mrs. Patterson welcomes the class. I want you to write a poem that describes what makes you special. If you want, you can share it with the class. Oh, I think that's a good activity. After we're done reading, maybe you as little readers can write a poem about what makes you special. Sounds good? All right. As the students get started on their poems, she hopes that each one of them will use their newfound confidence to read them to the class. Soon, it is time for the children to stop writing. May I read mine first, please? Justice asks. Of course, Mrs. Patterson smiles at her. Mrs. Patterson knows that Justice is one of the more confident ones in the group, and she is glad that she is asked to go first. She knows her poem will inspire others. As Justice stands up, nerves begin to fill her body. Her heart is beating quickly, so she takes a deep breath 
and imagines being her mama. Her nerves quickly disappear. Do any of you have to do presentations in class? Like show and tell or a little speech about your favorite thing? How does it make you feel? Excited? A bit nervous? Yeah. Oh, scared? Yeah. But as you build your confidence, those presentations will get easier, won't they? All right. Let's listen to Justice's poem. Your feet look like sailboats. That's just one of their jokes. I used to cry and just tell my folks my big feet are keepers. I wear mama's shoes and pretend I'm one of the teachers. I look like my mama with all of her cool features. Filling her shoes is my dream. I'll be like her one day. I don't care what they say. I'll reach my goals. I proclaim this today. All the students clap for justice and they hoped they could be just as brave as her. Well, that's a good opening poem, isn't it? Even though people were making fun of her, she pressed ahead and had confidence. I think she had a little bit of motivation because she wanted to be just like her mama. Who motivates you? Riley, would you like to go next? Mrs. Patterson asks gently. Um, yes. Riley takes a while to get to the front of the room. She has always been incredibly shy and nervous because she struggles to read clearly. Riley can feel all eyes on her. She thinks of her new friend, a dog named Brownie. She knows her friends are just as loyal as Brownie. They won't mind if she mixes her words up. I didn't like to read out loud when the teacher called my name. Words that I see and words others see, they aren't always the same. Reading was not my only challenge. Math is also a pain. 87 is 78. I wanted to blame my brain until I met my brownie boy who never judges me. I can read all day at my own pace. He makes me feel so free. My reading makes him smile again and wag his tail side to side. Reading is my superpower because it makes brownie have joy inside. inside. Put on your capes, kids. It can be your superpower too. Ah, oh, the children say, everyone is so proud of Riley, and they don't mind that she read more slowly than others. More importantly, Riley is proud of herself. Mrs. Patterson notices Somina walking to the front of the classroom without saying a word. Oops, I forgot something, says Somina, as she rushes back to grab her eyeglasses. This is the first time that Mrs. Patterson hasn't had to remind her to put them on. Today, she is able to clearly see the words that she is going to read and all her friends' smiling faces that reminded her to be courageous. It helps having friends on your side, doesn't it? Kind of gives you that extra boost. They laughed at my glasses, so I hid them in my desk. I couldn't see the board. Then I failed my science test. My teacher told me to put them on, but I didn't think I looked my best. When I put on my glasses, I can learn without the stress. I am distinguished, not shy. Now my parents are proud because my grades are rising high. It does help if you can see when you're trying to learn, right? Oh yeah, I see your glasses, very nice. Oh, blue rims, very cool. All of the poems All so the far are so inspiring that the other students can't wait to share theirs. They play rock, paper, scissors to decide who will go next. Ray is the winner. Do any of my little readers play that? Let's go. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, you got scissors. You snipped me up. <laughs> it isn't simply speaking that makes Ray uncomfortable. He is also nervous about sharing how he feels when people make fun of him for being short. Standing amongst the people who care about him within the classroom makes it easier for him to share. He goes to the front of the classroom and stands as tall as a statue. I was embarrassed when they would call me shorty. Now I don't really mind because my personality and brain bring me all the glory. I can play sports and run like no other. I love my height. I got it from my mother. I'm always in the front row of a class picture, smiling with glee. I count on my resilience and sportsmanship. My height 
doesn't define me. As Ray goes back to his seat, Mrs. Patterson notices Mario and Ray doing their secret handshake. They play on the same baseball team. Mario is usually quiet. Lately, he has been sticking up for Ray and being a supportive friend when people bully him. There it is again. Friends having your back helps you face those difficult situations. It is Mario's turn. Mrs. Patterson has seen Mario participate in all the activities during the counseling session, but she doesn't remember him saying very much. Mario quickly heads to the front of the room. Mario thinks it's so cool that he speaks both English and Spanish. It is finally time to tell his friends why. I get teased because I have a distinguished lingo, habla espanol. That's how I communicate with my people. I'm a proud Mexican. See the snake and brown eagle? I translate for my padre during my parent-teacher conference. I always tell the truth and I do it with confidence. Instead of teasing me, people should learn cultural tolerance. Wow, Mario's poem is awesome. That's a great message, right? Accepting one another in spite of differences and because of differences. The children are amazed by his pride for his language and country. And to top it off, they love the sound of his voice. Soon, Mrs. Patterson sees Farida come up to read her poem. She remembers how difficult it was for Farida to make friends because she doesn't speak very much. But when she does, her words catch everyone's attention. It is clear from the children's faces that they have lots of questions about her hijab. As Farida begins to read her poem, she can hear her jida, her grandmother, telling her, Be brave and tell those bullies what your hijab means to you. What's on your head? They ask. It's a hijab that I wear. Don't care what they think. Don't mind if they stare. My friends always ask me about my hair. I comb it. I wash it. Let's just be clear. I take it off when I'm at home with my family, when I sleep and when I shower. Underneath my hijab, my hair has a pin with a flower. I love wearing hijabs with all of my attire. Attire meaning all of her clothes, her different outfits. All the students clap for Farida, but her new friend Sharonda gives her a thumbs up and then stands up herself. It is her turn to read. At last, Sharonda goes to the front of the room, smooths out her shirt, closes and opens her eyes, then swallows. She is ready. I was born with cerebral palsy, the whispers and the stares, how they appall me. No friends to play with at recess, I beg my mom to withdraw me. I am smart, I am strong, I can do what they can do. Oh, the choices in life, what shall I pursue? I see myself in high places, I know my dreams will come true. Well, if that's not a poem full of confidence, I don't know what is. Good for her. That poem was wonderful, Shonda. I knew you could do it, says Mrs. Patterson with admiration. Thank you, replies Sharonda. Today is the first time she has ever spoken in public about what makes her different, and she doesn't regret her decision. Jacqueline's time has finally come. Mrs. Patterson remembers how frightened Jacqueline was one morning when she refused to get out of her dad's car because she thought she would be teased again for wearing an afro. Today, that fear feels like it's a million miles away as Jacqueline stands confidently at the front of the class with her latest do. My cotton mane spreads like the sun's rays. Oh, I love my natural hair. People are welcome to stop and stare. Don't you dare, never put your hands up there. Afro braids and twists are the hairstyles I wear. Proud to be African-American with my fist in the air. Wow, good job, Jacqueline. Yeah, sometimes having different hair texture, people aren't sure how to approach or they want to touch, but it's hair just like everybody else's. <laughs> Justice, Sharonda, and Kiara can relate to Jacqueline because they wear similar hairstyles. They are proud of Jacqueline for embracing her natural hair. Go on, girl. <laughs> Kiara is last. The second Kiara reaches the front of the room, her dark chocolate skin radiates as a beam of sunlight comes through the window. All eyes are on her, and she loves it. 
The attention and respect that she is getting at this moment makes her feel like a celebrity. Oh, pose for your close up. People pick on me because I have a richness of melanin in my complexion. With my skin, I see no imperfections. Black is the color of a radiant diamond. Diamonds are transformed coal. I can't worry about what they say because loving me is my goal. I'm not just beautiful from the outside. I have a beautiful heart, mind, and soul. Yes, you do, Kiara. Farida and Riley are very proud of Kiara. They've always known that Kiara is intelligent, well-spoken, beautiful, and a great friend. Now, wouldn't you love to be in a class like that? So supportive, everyone so accepting. I hope your classrooms are like that too. And if not, I hope you and your grown-ups can take steps to make sure inclusion is an important part of your school life. Thank you everyone for sharing. Because you have learned to embrace your differences, you understand the importance of being supportive and caring. You now have the tools that you need to face anyone who chooses not to see the best in you, Mrs. Patterson says proudly. Justice raises her hand high in the air. Justice, would you like to share something with the group? Mrs. Patterson asks. Yes, Mrs. Patterson. I learned that the best in me is simply being me, says Justice. That's right, exclaims Mrs. Patterson. I'm not going to let anyone's words upset me anymore, Somina announces. That's wonderful, Mrs. Patterson says. Sharonda speaks up. I'm proud of being different. I'm proud of being different too, Mario adds. The rest of the children agree. And I am proud of you all, Mrs. Patterson says with a smile. The end. Are there any teachers listening? Wouldn't that be an amazing class to have? I'd be so proud too. And I'm proud of all of you little readers. I so enjoy reading with you each and every story time. Right, Ja? We love reading together. So check in the description below. You'll find the link to where you can purchase a copy for yourself and go over those poems again. Weren't they awesome? I think so. And remember, the best place to read is wherever you are with a book. If you enjoy reading with us, please remember to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and hit that notification bell. Then we'll be able to read again soon. Happy reading, little readers. Goodbye. Ruthie's Reddit.